Hall and Derek Young from inside of Daryl K. Royal Memorial Stadium here in Austin, Texas, where the Texas Longhorns knock off 16th ranked Kansas State 27 24. Really a fantastic football game. The KSO Sunday Show, as always, is brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Derek, like I said, great game. We'll talk through it drive by drive in segment one, like we always do. But big picture, first off, your thoughts on K State's narrow loss to Texas today. Yeah, it showed a lot of heart because th it was a game where they could have. Uh, easily probably put the thrown the towel in. I was kind of thinking that way when Texas kind of stretched it to a 10 point lead at one point in the second half. So uh, a game where they showed grit and probably showed a little bit of growth because in games against Oklahoma State and Baylor, they didn't necessarily fight back and make that a, you know a more contentious game. They did so today. So despite the loss and despite it kind of being in heartbreaking fashion I still think they showed growth within the process I cannot agree more again I'm not going to tell K-State fans or any fans to be happy about a loss more a lot moral wins are, are silly and that kind of stuff but if you like Chris Kleiman and you hear Chris Kleiman tell you all the time don't be a results driven person mm. and you're only going to react to how this win or loss comes you're being a results driven person so it's up to you how you want to do it but Chris Kleiman wants you to embrace the process I think K-State moved forward a little bit today too let's talk through it drive by drive Derek we talked so much coming into this about how important it would be for K-State to get off to a quick start. Uh, they did that and still lost the game, but the Wildcats started basically perfect. It took almost no time for the Wildcats to get on the board, seven nothing. It was a Malik Knowles 70 yard touchdown pass from Skylar Thompson, and I believe the third snap of the game. Yeah, it was. So with 13-26 left in the first quarter, DY K-State is already up seven nothing. Yeah, it was on third down where Malik Knowles caught the ball. He, he, uh actually motioned into the backfield on this play and then Texas decided not to cover him. Once he went out for a route out of the backfield, he only had a juke one defender and he was off to the races. Uh, Kansas State scored on both of their opening drives uh, to, to go jump out to a 14 nothing lead, uh, scored twice on their first two drives. You can't ask for a better start. No doubt about it. K-State continues that, like we said, with a Y King Gill 19-yard touchdown pass from Skylar Thompson. That went eight plays, 63 yards, took 417. Derek's already kind of hit on the fact K-State, you know, scored those first two drives and how big the start was. It was 14 nothing then with 518 still left in the first quarter. Derek, Texas gets on the board not until early in the second quarter on a Colin Johnson 21-yard touchdown from Sam Ellinger. Bit of a flea flicker look from the Longhorns. When I say bit of, I mean an absolute flea flicker look. And Texas is on the board trailing 14-7 with 12.03 left in the second quarter. Yeah, and the touchdown pass from Skylar Thompson to White King Gill was just an excellent throw. It seemed like the first seven or eight completions were all actually tough throws. Texas had it defended fairly well, and Thompson just was dropping dimes early and often. He had 135 passing yards in the first two drives, I believe, so a good start for him. Texas gets on the board 14 to 7. The flea flicker touchdown was more because Kevion McGee did bite on the run action. It's something that he did often tonight and I think Texas burned him not once but maybe two or three times. I think that's correct. It is 14-7 at halftime. The Wildcats and Longhorns neither can score in the last 12 minutes of the second quarter. It takes Texas less than two minutes to score in the third quarter as Keontae Ingram scores from 34 yards out. Cameron Dicker adds the extra point. Just four plays, 75 yards, minute 43 off the clock and Derek with 13-17 left in the third quarter. We are tied at 14. Yeah, Texas, uh, you thought they had all the momentum in that game at that point. Uh, Kansas State hadn't scored since the first two drives of the game. Those empty possessions, I think, came back to hurt Kansas State because not only did they not impact the scoreboard, obviously, by putting points uh, for in favor of the Wildcats, but they really put their defense in tough spot after tough spot. And when you continuously do that, at some point, the dam breaks. And I thought it started to at that point for the Kansas State defense. And then the special teams would follow that up with a little bit of a gaff on their own, not making a tackle on a punt return. They really set up the Wild or set up the Longhorns to, to score their next touchdown. No doubt about it. Between that play, Texas gets another field goal just three minutes later in this game. Cameron Dicker from 36 yards out, seven plays, 52 yards, 233, gives Texas the lead 17 14. Derek, K State's defense did do a nice job here, keeping Texas to a field goal after letting the Longhorns drive deep into K State territory. Yeah, that was key. They, they got enough defensive stops to win this game. They just didn't make the plays at the end of the game when they needed it, particularly on third down, uh, getting off the field. But they did enough in the middle of the game, especially with the offense putting them in tough spot after tough spot. Derek talked about a very key play in the game, which is a long Texas punt return that set the Longhorns up at K-State's 21-yard line. Just three plays later, Keontae Ingram scores from 12 yards out. So with 12-17 still up to the fourth quarter, suddenly Texas is up 24-14. I feel like the Longhorns are in complete control myself. I'm sure maybe you're the same. And as were the 97,833 here today in DKR. 
But Josh Youngblood on the ensuing kickoff goes 98 yards. You had called this for weeks that he was going to score a touchdown. Excuse me, score a touchdown on a kickoff return this year. He does, and with still over 12 minutes left in this game, it is 24-21. K-State down just three to Texas. And with the punt return by Texas and with the touchdown by Keontae Ingram and a couple other runs by Ingram and even a couple by Ellinger as well, uh, a little bit of poor tackling kind of reared its head a little bit for Kansas State, and you're not going to have – you know, perfect game after perfect game when, in, in a tackling effort. And I don't think it was a disaster by any means today, but it probably failed them in, in critical times. And I think in those two plays in particular, uh, that was probably the culprit. I did say that Joshua Youngblood was coming so close this year to ripping off a kick return for a touchdown or a punt return for a touchdown, though Phillip Brooks took those duties back today. I thought that before the end of the season, we would see him take one for a touchdown. And we saw that today, and it really – uh, probably put the momentum back in K-State's favor. They'd also get a field goal soon after and tie and tie the game up, obviously. But, uh, yeah, just swung the momentum. Uh, once Texas got it by 10, I, like many others, like Matt, and he have, he's already referenced, just didn't think that Kansas State would probably have enough fight left in them. I thought that the field goal and the touchdown for Texas was probably the dagger. I felt the same way. K-State, of course, responds. They get a three and out, I believe, right after that Josh Youngblood kickoff return for a touchdown. K-State gets the ball back, goes nine plays, 45 yards, 350 off the clock. A Blake Lynch, as, as you said in the press box, nails kick from 45 yards out to tie it at 24. A play in this series, Dalton Schoen really had to make a catch within you know triple to quadruple coverage for a go-ahead touchdown. It was a really well-thrown ball, a tough catch for Schoen to make. He wasn't able to make it very hard himself in postgame, but I think that was a tough play for him to make perhaps, D.Y. It was definitely a catchable ball just because Thompson put it in the perfect yep. spot and hit his hands without, I think, a Texas defender necessarily getting his hands on it at the same time. So something where he probably needs to catch catch that ball and that, and that, and that point of the game but again just a tough catch you also got to question a little bit of the decision to throw that ball it was into quadruple coverage and if it doesn't go your way it also takes you out of field goal range no doubt about it fortunately for k-state somewhat fortunately because shown didn't uh, complete the catch they do get a chance to kick the field goal blake lynch is good from 45 yards away the wildcats tied at 24 there's 645 left in the game at this point unfortunately Derek k-state never touches it again the longhorns use all 645 they end the game with a cameron dicker field goal on the final play of the game and it's 27 24 texas with the win yeah and the key play on that drive was a third and 14 that texas converted with just under four minutes left to go it was at midfield uh Scotty Hazelton chose to blitz on that play. They, they they didn't get there in time, and Ellinger just completed the pass. But if Tech if Kansas State forces that into a fourth and long on that play, they're getting the ball back with about four minutes to go. And the, probably the worst case scenario at that point is you're going to overtime. So that was really a play that swung that drive, and then as a result, swung that game. In a game this close like this, you could pick 30 plays like that. Of course, it could swing it. That was a huge play, of course, for this one. And give Texas credit. Somebody was going to win this game when it was tied 24-24. K-State never got it back. Texas maintained it the kick to win Longhorns are victorious Wildcats fall to six and three on the season that wraps up segment one of the KSO Sunday show from Austin Texas we'll be back for segment two where you'll hear from Chris Kleiman and the Wildcats after losing to the Longhorns said you know that was just a good football game overall you know even though we came out with the loss you know I think we battled hard and we're uh, you know we never had a doubt in our mind that we we're gonna lose that football game and uh, you know we battled all 60 minutes and uh, you know you can win with that you know this is definitely a learning experience for us it's, uh, you know it's tough losing but um, it's definitely, it definitely a great opportunity for us to bounce back and learn from this. Yeah, it definitely hurts a lot, especially in a game where you feel like you were probably the better team, played better, um, and just ultimately didn't make enough plays to win the game. Um, that just hurts to go down like that. Um, they just they sent some pressure, um, started pressuring us up a little bit more, um, and they just they did pretty well on third down, uh, but it's in some tough positions. We were kind of um, kind of a couple drives there. We weren't doing very well in first and second down the way we were in third and long. And, that's never, never good. Um, but you know, they're they're a good football team. They do a lot of weird contour stuff on defense as far as bringing a lot of pressure um, and some weird looks that are just unusual. Um, I thought that we did, you know, pretty good job for the most part of dealing with. You know, it's it's tough. We knew that we we're they're going to beat us a couple times. It's part of part of it. Um, they're a good defense, and um, you know. They, uh, like I said, do, do some unique things that allow them to, uh, you know, make some plays. But you know, I just I thought that we, you know, we did well at times, and we got to get better at some things. You know, that's that's the main takeaway. Um, but you know, we, we we'll be fine. You know, we just gotta buckle down and keep trusting one another, keep believing in one another, um, and just trust the process. Uh, congratulate Texas. Uh, they did a nice job of manufacturing the last drive to kick the field goal to. To win the game, proud of our guys. We, I uh, thought we played well uh, against a really good football team, and 
got off to a fast start, which we had to do with those guys coming off an open week and, and having lost a game and um, couldn't have asked for a better start to go up 14 to nothing. And then uh, I think the game settled down. And uh, obviously, they're a really good football team. They Offensively, defensively, they've got really good players. And uh, they were able to jump on us in the second half and get up 24-14 and uh, proud of the way our guys uh, fought back and, and had an opportunity to uh, uh, take the lead and we end up tying the game and um, and then uh, they make a nice drive with the quarterback making some plays and kick a game winner. It stinks to lose. Uh, there's no moral victories. Uh, guys are hurting, but um, um, proud of the way the guys fought and battled and, and uh, we need to uh, bounce back and, and have a great week of prep and get ready for the next one. What did you guys see on the, the third and 14 conversion of the uh, we pressured and they picked it up and, and their receiver uh, got open and, and quarterback delivered on the ball and shoot, they made a play. What adjustments did they make that seemed most problematic? They blitzed us unbelievably in the in the second quarter on, especially in the run game. They, they were not going to sit there uh, and allow Skyler time to throw it or for us to rush the football. And when we rushed the football as well as we did last week, um, we anticipated pressure, but uh, I thought they, they did a really good job of of saying you're not going to run the football because we're going to overload the box all day long. That third quarter, it seemed like uh, they really put their foot down. Um, how problematic was that third quarter? Well, they, they're tough to block. I mean, they're really good. They, they've got really good defensive linemen and linebackers that uh, I thought uh, hit their fits really well and, and caused us some problems. And then, um, you know, we we were kind of on our heels a little bit trying to stop some of the RPO game by doubling the, the, the big receiver that was such a talented guy. Uh, but then if you do that, then you're a little short in the run game. And, and we were kind of trying to uh, do a little bit of both. And um, it, it's difficult because... Uh, uh, they have the ability to, with their RPO game, to, to hurt us, whether it's a slot or the X receiver, as well as run the football. And I thought the quarterback did a really good job of really holding it and riding it out. How tricky is it to manage that late game situation where they're more or less trying not to score to get the last play? How, just how do you play that out? Yeah, I mean, we, we wanted to try to get the stop originally, and then when the time was going to run out, we, we assumed that you know we were trying to strip it, strip it. If they score, they score, but they weren't trying to score. Obviously, they were just going to go down and, and try to kick field goal. Did you feel like the fumble there by, by Mason, did that really take the window out of your play? Uh, yeah, potentially. I thought we could have maybe gotten three out of it uh, there. Who knows? Um, but uh, I don't know if they even scored on uh, on that drive or not. I didn't think they did, but they, they may have. It was obviously uh, a big play. Play, trying not to uh, turn the football over is key in that, but I think you know we countered that by by Walt making a big interception that probably derailed one of their scoring opportunities. You guys have, have had success, and this is a setback. What what did you say to the guys in the locker? Uh, that we're a really good team and uh, continue to believe and continue to, to uh, own your preparation Monday through Friday because our guys were prepared and ready to play and um, I, I know we're getting better every week and uh, it, it, once again, it, it stinks to lose. It, it sucks and, and the guys are hurting in there but I, I know we're getting better and uh, you know, we got to move on to the next week. It'll, this won't hurt for 24 hours, and we got to move on. And we got to get a lot of season left to play. And what did they show you, especially? At just great resolve, which I, I knew they had, and uh, you know they, they didn't flinch. Um, they didn't flinch when we were up 14 nothing, and they didn't flinch when we were down 24-14. It was the same even keel sideline. Uh, they knew this was going to be a four-quarter game, and uh, uh, it sure as heck was. Does your approach change at all when you do start off so well in a game like today? No, not not really. I mean, it's not like we changed a bunch of things we were doing. I, I think they probably adjusted more by pressure and, and, and things. And they just didn't have, I didn't think they had the ball very much in the first quarter. And that was why, you know, we were able to get the one stop and then get another score. But, uh, um, you know, I, I knew uh, that this was going to come down to a four-quarter affair. How much have the, the injuries you've been dealing with that running back affected the offense? You know, obviously some, you know, when – 
James can't play, didn't he make the trip? And and Jordan, he's not Jordan uh, as 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 we know. Uh, and we gave it to Tyler a little bit today. But give Texas credit, you know, whomever was rushing the football today, they were going to outnumber us at the point of attack. And and uh, I, I thought their front played really well. Was that as good as you've seen Skyler as, as pass from? He's had a career high for yards today. And there was one point in the first four, or in the first half, he was thirteen and fifteen at seven straight. I thought he hung in there really well because they were bringing pressure and some of it was delayed pressure and we were barely getting guys free uh, and, and he would hang in there and, and make some good throws and even the, the touchdown to um, to Malik on the first one, they had double pressure coming off the outside and we picked up one of them and he just got the ball off but uh, that's what uh, good quarterbacks do is they, they make people uh, pay when they do pressure them. What were your thoughts on what you saw from, from Josh when they kick off return late there? Yeah, that was a big play. Uh, happy for for our guys and and uh, great design and great blocking. And then uh, he hit the seam and he's got another gear. And I, I'm excited for him uh, to make a big play in in a big game. That's a true freshman doing it on a big stage. And uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that that'll continue to give him confidence in in all in all aspects of his game. You guys came into this with. Number 16 next year in the playoff rankings. Do you sense that maybe Texas was a little bit more fired up than some other teams? Couldn't tell you. You'd have to ask those guys. I mean, we didn't talk about the 16th ranking at all. I'm sure it's out there on social media, but our guys just focused on the daily process of trying to find a way to come up with a plan to uh, to beat them. I, I think a big factor was they had an open week and, and they were able to get some guys healthy and uh, they had a great game plan and uh, they executed it. I know a lot of people, I'm sure, were wondering how you guys would look without AJ. I mean, you got only give up the one touchdown, you have the interception. How did you like the way the DBs played? You know, I was proud of Kiwi. And, and Walt, um, I think they went most of the way. I don't know that I'd have talked to Van if he put anybody else in, but uh, I thought they they battled against some really good receivers. You know, Johnson and, and Duvernay are, are excellent receivers, and um, the run pass option uh, when the quarterback's running it like he is, uh, you know, they can just beat you so many ways. And so I, I thought our guys battled. What would the status be of James and Joe? Irvin? They're week to week. I, I you know, I, I thought James practiced uh, better this week. Uh, a little, you know, on Thursday was the only day he really gave us, and um, then they just said he didn't think he would. You know, and, and on the road, you only can take so many guys, and so for us to take somebody and then not be able to play him really hurts us on special teams, and so we'll have to evaluate him again next week. Anything else? How about the the road ahead? Three games to go. What can you guys do from here? Well, we can do an awful lot still, but uh, it starts with um, West Virginia this week and, and having great preparation and getting a chance to play at home. And uh, seniors only have a couple more opportunities to, to play at home. And so, um, like I said, this one will sting, but uh, our guys will, will bounce back and, and the leadership will show up. He's a tremendous football player. He's a he's very tough. He throws the ball really well. He reads things really well. He's very patient. Uh, he's hard to bring down. And uh, granted, he didn't hurt us as much running the football, but he just kept plays alive. He's a tremendous football player. You know, we see this game more as a, uh, as a learning experience rather than a tough loss. Uh, you know, we only lost by three to a field goal at the end. Uh, it was a great football game, like I said earlier. But uh, you know, we have four football games, football games left in the season. And, uh, you know, honestly. As cliche as it sounds, you know, this loss in our minds is definitely a great learning experience and uh, something that we're definitely going to What did you think about the play of your unit, you know, that first game without AJ? Oh, man, you know, that's my brother. Uh, mm -hmm. um, that's my roommate. Um, I know how much he loves the game. I know how much he works hard for the game. So, really, all this week, you know, I would just be in the room with him. And we'll still be watching film, chopping it up. And I told him I'll make a play for him. So, I know it. Well, I guess there's been more. Four games left in the season. You know, that's, you know, the season's coming to an end, you know, quickly before we know it. And, uh, you know, once that, once that, the, that time of the season starts coming around, uh, you know, guys are really, you know, extra hitting hard, you know, with their focus, you know, Monday through Thursday with practice, with film study, uh, just because they know the season's come to an end and, uh, you know, just want to always want to kick it off the right way. Derek and I are back for the third and final segment of the KSO Sunday show. 
from inside of DKR Texas Memorial Stadium here in Austin, Texas. Beautiful day down here. I had a great time watching a great college football game. Derek, a few questions before we wrap this up and move forward with our coverage here at KSO. Skylar Thompson today is career high for passing, 250 plus yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Not much running game for K-State today, so Skylar had to be the guy, and I thought he played pretty well for the Wildcats. Yeah, Texas actually, you could tell one of the parts of the key parts of their game plan was to take away the QB run game. They did that. Hats off to Tom Herman and Todd Orlando for accomplishing that. And Skyler had to go through the air, and this was probably the most efficient and the most lethal. They've been throwing the ball all season. 135 yards in the first two drives, like I said, over 200 in the first half. We joked when he got to 217, like, is he going to, you know, it's almost halftime when he got to 217. Right. Is he going to get his career high of 218? We joked that he might not. It actually had to go until the fourth quarter to get it. Sticking in the passing game, I want to ask about the receivers for a second because we were critical earlier in the season about being able to gain separation. But you look at today, Malik Knowles, 70-yard touchdown. Dalton Schoen had a number of huge third-down catches. Wyking Gill had a touchdown catch. Phillip Brooks had a few big catches. I'm forgetting some guys, too. K-State's receivers have gotten better as well, I think, D.Y. It's probably the most improved unit, at least on the offensive side of the ball. It certainly helped Skylar Thompson kind of get out of the rut that he was in against Oklahoma State and against Baylor. Uh, you know, getting separation probably – has helped this group more than anything. They're just making better contested catches because there's not a whole lot of window a lot of times that they're making these catches and they're making these throws. And Skylar Thompson deserves some kudos as well. And and yards after catch has been a big deal as well. You saw Malik Knowles, almost his entire catch was yards after the catch. And, and same way with Phil Brooks. He's that slippery player that again today got loose a few times. One more offensive, offensive position I want to ask about is running back. Of course, as you reported earlier this morning, Saturday morning, I guess, James Gilbert did not make the trip. Joe Irvin did not make the trip. Jordan Brown played a little bit. Chris Kleiman said in postgame, as you heard in segment two, Jordan wasn't Jordan today. How much do you think the injuries at running back did impact K-State's rush offense today? It, it probably impacted a little bit. Tyler Burns did good in his action, of course, and we knew that he was going to play when we found out that James Gilbert and Joe Irvin would not play. It's funny that Joe, he said Jordan Brown wasn't Jordan Brown today, and I believe that, but he still had the most snaps of any running back today as well, even more than Harry Trotter, who had the most in the game before. No doubt about it. Let's go to defense for a second. Of course, K-State fans will be disappointed with the late score to lose this game, but giving up 27 to a Texas offense that's been pretty good throughout the entire season, one of the better offenses in college football, I think, like you said earlier, was probably enough in a general sense for K-State to win this game. Probably enough in a general sense, and there was a, spots in the middle of the game where I thought they were great, especially when they were put, a, put into tough situations and just making some plays. They probably needed one more big play to uh, give their offense an opportunity to go win the game. I kind of thought going into the, going into this contest that the defense would have to win it for them. They almost did. They just came up one play short, I think. I'm going to wrap this up differently than we have a few shows. I'm going to put you on the spot like I normally do. That's not a change, but right. a different kind of question. So K-State 6-3 and three right now. Three games left, looking at a home game against West Virginia, a trip to Texas Tech, and a home game against Iowa State. If K-State's going to win out and go 9-3, and three, which seems realistically possible in those three games, what are a couple things, whether it's health, whether it's getting better on the offensive line, whatever it is, that come to mind for you that you think K-State needs to do to get to nine wins, which would be a great first season for Chris Kleiman? Health would always always comes into play, I think, but I, I guess I didn't think that the health played a big role in today's game. I thought they got yeah. enough from the running backs. I thought even though Kevion McGee gave up a touchdown on that flea flicker, they were probably going to score that drive anyway, right. so did you. So I don't know if that health would probably be the biggest factor in the next three games. I think the offense probably needs to have less uh, cold spells, yeah. if you want to call it, because he can't go two quarters without – getting like three first downs, right. for example. And the defense, that'll help the defense in turn because they'll be off the field a little bit more, uh, but less pressure, less bad spots. So I think the offense is, just has to continue that consistency that we started to see the last few weeks because it fell apart for two quarters today. Well said. Still a lot to play for. Frustrating loss for sure. K-State's plenty frustrated, but a lot to play for for the Wildcats. I want to thank Grant Flanders, Derek Young, for also heading out to Cedar Ridge, Round Rock. I'm going to so get it June. wrong. Last night, I did too, to see Deuce Vaughn. Uh, it was fantastic. Case that commit over 300 yards, total offense, five touchdowns. Grant Flanders put highlights up. If you haven't seen those already, worth watching. I appreciate Flando, appreciate DY. That wraps up the KSO Sunday show from Austin. Please do us one final favor. Basketball team one, two, tell your friends.